welcome back to episode 37, I think, of Pokemon Gold. Today it's time to awaken that Snorlax we saw in the last episode, and to do that we have to actually fly over to Lavender Town, which I actually went to off screen, but I'll show you how to get to it anyway if you are uncertain. We need to go to, where is it, <laughs> Saffron City first thing. And there are actually some trainers we need to battle, so I think I'll battle them first. I did I did battle one off screen, but the only thing important there he had was I think three Magnemite, so it wasn't really much to uh wasn't much to see anyway, I just accidentally did it off screen. So to so to, so to get to Lavender Town we have to go to Sap One and we have to head uh, left from there, or right, sorry. And you'll see that here's a path to the underground. That's one that's one other way you can do it, you can use the underground path, but we can use this way as well. We have three bikers here. We have to get. We have to get rid of first. And I don't know who's up front. We have Amphros. So we'll do for Alligator actually. I think let's get for Alligator some more XP going here. And we have three bikers to face. One red, one green, and one blue. They're the Pokemon Federation trainer group apparently, and they'll drive us under their wheels. That sounds terrible. All right. Um, sorry if I seemed a bit low pitched in the last episode, I was just a bit uh, down for some reason. I don't know why, my commentary style just didn't seem as uh, as active as it usually does, but hopefully gonna fix that in this episode. I do think I sound a lot a lot more chirpier now. So hopefully hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know if you I don't know if you can, but I know I can definitely feel it myself that I feel a lot better for this particular episode. Uh, so this first train here obviously is just going to have the regular things that bikers would have, coughings, so the, you know, the general stuff. I don't see much Slash does, because if Slash one hit kills it, then I'll just keep using Slash. I, I, w I would be kind of surprised if it didn't, considering the level difference is almost 30 levels. It's like, what, 25 level difference? That's pretty big. These guys aren't exactly, if you, these guys aren't exactly the strongest people to fight, so honestly, they, these guys should not be much of a challenge for you at this point at all, especially if you have level 50s or something like I do at this point. Uh, copying again. Let's go for a slash attack. Uh, there was actually a couple of things I need to do in this game that don't involve gym badges. I've realised that there are a couple of extra things that's after the game that I've completely forgotten about. So I will need to do go take care of those soonish, but for now I want to focus on getting to Pewter City and battling Brock because that is it's on the, that is on the road to another part of the after game which I haven't covered yet. So we have to get to Brock first, and then we'll get rid of the next topic or not topic, the next objective on our list. This guy's something different. He has a Flareon. Seems bikers seem to love fire types apparently. Good thing we have Flareon up front, so we can just use Surf. Although it is Quick Attack. Oh god. God damn quick attack. Uh, but Surf should obviously take this thing out in one hit, considering Flareon doesn't have the greatest defense anyway, so it should be a pretty easy take out there. Yep, there we go. A lot of experience, very nice, and that's it. And the next and final trainer, he is gonna say the same thing basically. And what's he gonna have? He is gonna have how many Pokemon? Hoping for a small amount here, just so we can get this done quickly. Two, that's fine. He begins with a coughing, as do you, as they usually do. Hopefully two, so we'll just use Slash and hopefully take this thing out in one. We're 21 levels higher, so it should be a pretty easy one hit KO here. We can hope. Let's see, yep. Easy peasy. And we may get a level up from this battle as well, which would be nice. Uh, coughing again. So in this you'll face like six coughings and one Flareon. Kind of a weird amount of Pokemon to be facing, but it's pretty I guess it's nice. It gives you a good bit of good each coughing gives around like seven hundred XP and the Flareon gives like over a thousand, so I'm I mean this isn't a bad place to train to be honest if you if you can somehow train here. I don't know if you can. I don't know how the training mechanics work in this game up and you calling people up on the Poke Gear, which I haven't done. I don't know how training works, but I would suggest coming here because you do get quite a lot of XP from these trainers. And if you do need the if you do need the XP for gym battles or for a specific battle or a specific battle later on in the game or something that you're having trouble with, this is probably a good place to go. Right, so let's go for the surf. Now finally we're facing a grime. I would I would expect to face one of these guys on the cycling road, but we didn't for some reason. So I guess we're making up for it here with this climber. <laughs> Easy. And next he has a muck, I'm gonna guess. Uh, yes he does. 
I think I think this guy was also in the previous game as well because I remember a guy on this route having Grime on the mark. So I'm pretty sure this is the same guy, just with uh, higher levels, of course. Not sure if that will one hit KO. I'm hoping it will, but I'm not sure. Oh, close. Yeah, I don't think that one. I don't think that would one hit kill it because I know Muck is a Muck is a pretty defensive Pokemon. There we go. That's a good bit of XP there. And Super Nerd Sam has been defeated. Let's keep moving on. I believe this was the trainer I battled. Yep. Okay, that's the guy with the three Magnemites that I battled. And then if we come here, we're now in Lavender Town. And in Lavender and in Lavender Town, there is actually this. This is this was the originally the Pokemon Tower. But now if you come in here and we talk to this man. Ah, so you're the Joe who solved the power plant's problem? Thanks to you, I never lost my job. I'll tell you, you're a real lifesaver. Please take this to my thanks. And he'll give you the e EXPN card, which is actually something for your Poke Gear and will actually allow you to access the radio programs and Kanto. Now you're probably thinking, what good is this? Like, why would we like why would we need this crappy thing? Like, we don't use the Poke Gear at all in this game, really. So why do we need it? Well, I'll, well, I'll tell, I'll show you guys why as soon as I get back to Vermilion City. So what we need to do is actually come all the way back to over to the Snorlax, now that we have the EXPN card. And we need to access the Poke Gear, and we need to go to this option over here, the radio, and we need to press down, and we need to press the up button until we reach the end. And here we have the Poke Flute, and then after that we'll have to press the B button. Then we now we have now we have the Poke Gear music playing or the Poke Flute, and as soon as we uh, do that, if we press A on the Snorlax to and talk to it, Snorlax will wake up thanks to the Poke Flute's music, and you will have to battle it. Now you can obviously catch this Snorlax; it is pretty high level. It's level 50. I mean, I could try and catch it. Who knows? It could be useful. I don't know though. So let's go for a Surf Attack here, and we're just gonna see how much damage this does. And after we defeat him, then we will be able to access the Diglett Cave, which will be pretty awesome. Snorlax is very defensive, has a lot of HP, and also has a move called Rest, which will, as you know, heal up his Pokemon fully. Heal up your Pokemon heal, no, heal up your Pokemon. Yeah, it'll, it'll heal up your Pokemon fully and put it to sleep. The Snorlax also, also seems to have the, le have the leftovers, which means each turn it will regain a little bit more of its HP. I don't know what happened if you ran away from it, but I don't, I don't want to run away from it anyway, because I have a strange feeling I can get a good amount of XP from this thing for defeating it. So let's try and take this thing out as quick as we can. One more surf after this should be enough. Its rollout can be a bit annoying if it if it uses it first because it's going to just do more and more damage each and every turn. But we should be able to take it out here. Like you can catch it. It's, very, it's pretty difficult to capture though. I mean its catch rate in general isn't exactly the best. Added to the fact that it has leftovers, rest and, and it's just very defensive in general. It's pretty difficult to capture. But it might be worth it. You never know. Right, now, now we're in Diglett's Cave. Do I have repels? Did I buy repels? I think I did at one point, did I? Didn't I? I just want to bought repels at some point. Didn't I buy repels? Are they at the top? I just missed them. No. I guess I didn't. I could have sworn I bought repels at one point. Oh, god damn it. Gee, I'm not surprised we're finding Diglett's here. Level 19. Right. Okay. Considering. Okay. This next. Uh, the, the the Diglett Cave is basically a one straight path. So I'll I'll meet you guys back at the end of it, at the end of Diglett Cave because really I don't want to be interrupted a lot whilst just Diglets are appearing everywhere. So I'll be right back and and I'll come back if something interesting happens. That literally took about five seconds. That was not. This is a lot shorter shorter diet than I remember. Sorry for wasting your time. Well, what what is this music? It sounds like a Viridian Forest music, but yeah, we're not in Viridian Forest, we're on Route 2. After after exiting here, we can actually come over here and grab a Carbos from a... Uh, well, not from a... from, from the ground. Uh, I don't think that was there in the originals. Then we have to come over here and use Cut. And it seems that there is a trainer here we can battle. Okay then, let's battle him. If you walk in the tall grass wearing shorts, do you get... The, 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 what the fuck? Okay! You're a strange person. Let's battle you and just take you out. Oh god, the bug catches have returned. What do you got? 
Bee drill, something actually useful and interesting. That's new. All right, then let's go for the surf. Drown this thing. I still think water should be super effective against bug. It basically it drowns them for God's sake. I mean, bug bugs can't swim. They die when they touch a large amount of water because they drown so easily. Shouldn't water be super effective against bug as well, technically? Like, that would be pretty overpowered, but still. It would make sense. I think I, saw, I, think I, talked, about, I, think I talked about that earlier, actually, in a previous episode. I don't, I don't remember if I did, and if I did, when it was. But this guy's three bee drills. Surprisingly not as giving as much XP as I was expecting. Then again, they are only level 30, so... And we're 24 levels higher, so I wouldn't expect to give it too much experience. There we go. Alright, with that, we've defeated Bucket Ed, and now it's time to enter Pewter City at last. Pewter City! First, let's heal up our guys, and then we'll go to take on Brock. And that'll be gym number 6 done after that. Hopefully, Brock will be pretty easy, but I have a strange feeling he will be quite easy, considering he's a rock type person. I believe he has one Pokemon that is. Uh, additional to rock. I think he has a rock water type as well, but if so, Ampharos can take that out. So I think we'll be in a good position here to take it out, but we'll see. So to get to Brock, obviously we just have to go around this, around the corner here, and here's the, entr here's, here's the entrance to the gym. I'm not sure if he's going to have any trainers to fight, but we'll have a look. He does have one person, so let's take him on first. Use rock type Pokemon. Well, okay. So you think that these battles are going to last a long time because Rock Pokemon have very strong defences. Okay, then let's see how long this battle will take. You have a Sand Slash. That's not even a Rock type. Why are you using it in a... Okay. The thing's not even a Rock type. I don't even understand what you're talking about. You say they use Rock types here and yet you don't even use one. That makes total sense, yeah? And about the whole battles going on for ages thing, doesn't seem like that really happened much here, did it? Let's take on Brock now. Wow, it's not often will we get a challenger from Johto. I'm Brock, the gym leader's the gym leader of Futa. I'm an expert on Brock types. My Pokemon are in previous impervious to most physical attacks. You'll have a hard time inflicting any damage. Come on, good thing we have special attacks then. So yes, Gym Leader Brock, this sixth Gym Leader I will be battling in this game. He has five Pokemon, beginning with a uh, Graveler. Level uh, 41. So obviously this is already more powerful than Janine ever was, because Janine was terribly underleveled, level 33s and 36s. None of our Pokemon even reached level 40, so... This shows that this is clearly more, meant to be more difficult. But obviously, Gravel is a rock and ground type, so water moves are very effective. Uh, Kabutops. This is something you probably w w weren't expecting rock to have, considering it's a fossil Pokemon. But then again, it is a rock type. So Kabutops is a really nice Pokemon. and something I've never actually really used much, and I've wanted to. It's a rock water type. It evolves from Kabuto. And Kabuto comes from, obviously, a fossil, as I just said. But electric attacks are very strong against it, so that's your best bet to use against Kabutops. Uh, I don't know best Pokemon because that because normally the Pokemon like in the in, in the left slot is usually his best one and that's already an X so was that his best one already? If it was, then this might be a bit easier than I expected. Uh, next he has a Rhyhorn, level 41. We'll just surf this thing away here pretty easily. I'll show you his Ice Punch. Uh, surf or Ice Punch. Ooh. Go for Surf, I think. Cause just want to make sure I take it out. Like I know Ice Punch probably would, but just in case, want to use the Surf. Let's hope we can Fradigate up to level 55, even. Wow. We've definitely we've definitely leveled up a lot since beating since beating our Lance, because I remember a lot when we were battling Lance, I'm pretty sure we were a bit underleveled, I think, just slightly. Omastar, here's another rock water type. It's basically the alternative version of Kabutops, just it's the other fossil. Uh no not as strong, I don't think. So shouldn't be too much of an issue. We're gonna use uh, Fun Punch again. Hopefully should take it out in one hit as well. 
There we go. Almost stars down as well. I would never use the Force Pokemon, so I don't exactly know how powerful they actually are. His final Pokemon is an Onyx. Of course, you would, you would obviously expect Brock to have an Onyx, because Onyx is basically his main Pokemon, his key one. It's the Pokemon he tends to use a lot. That is level 44, so we'll just hopefully finish this thing off with one Surf Attack. And with that, Brock is down as well, hopefully. Assuming this thing will, will not survive. Let's have a look. There we go. Critical hit even, super effective. Alright. That's it, Jim Leader Brock has been defeated. We've now done six of the uh, six of the eight. So now we just have uh, Cinnabar Island and Viridian City to go. And we received the Boulder Badge from Brock. Excellent. Telling you are even even do even though I am a bit upset, that Boulder Badge will make your Pokemon even more powerful. Excellent. Thanks, Brock. Alright, and with that, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm not sure if it was long or short, but I've been feeling it was quite short, but I'm not sure. if We've defeated Brock in this, in this episode, so next episode, it's time to head to Cinnabar Island, because that's our next destination. As it turns out, that I believe the gym leader isn't actually in Pewter City yet, and we, no, Pure, uh, Viridian City, so we, and we actually need to go to Viridian, fuck, Cinnabar Island. I will never get these names correct, even though I've played this game for 10 years. But we need to go to Cinnabar Island first to find the gym leader of Viridian City, and we also need to go to Cinnabar to battle Blaine anyway. So Cinnabar Island is our next is our next uh, port of call. So I'll see you guys next episode where we enter um, the next city. So I'll see you guys then. But first, we have to go through the. Is this Viridian Forest? Did they take out Viridian Forest completely? We'll find out next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you then. Bye bye.